And welcome back to Holden's Golden Age of Wargaming, part two of our Let's Learn of uh, Wargame Design Studios title, The Renaissance. And we are playing the Battle of Seminara in 28th of June, 1495. Uh, hopefully I've modified the uh, sound settings, so hopefully uh, the background noise isn't a little too loud as it was in the first video. All right, so we move in here. Uh, I guess, oh yeah, right. Let's get rid of this. There we go. So at the end of the last video, I was done with the uh, French turn, but I didn't actually hit the uh, end turn button. And this will lead into the next. Uh, so if we hit next turn, we now see that A side, which is the French, it's now the melee uh, phase. <clears throat> and that is, uh, so for your movement, you have two phases. One is movement of fire, and the second is melee. And that basically means that you cannot do a melee, move another unit up, and do another melee. You have to have everything all set and done. All your movement has to be finished before you can do any me melees. Um, and that's because we're playing with the settings, the default settings. Uh, but anyways, we do not have any melee. So we're going to hit end turn again, and we're now on to B side, their turn. So let's move up to the Kingdom of Naples. <clears throat> and this is, well, the uh, OCD in me is, this is a mess. We're going to have to, we're going to have to fix this. Um, all right. So our main plan is we need to get across and strike at the French before all their reinforcements can show up because uh, what I can tell here right now we outnumber them by quite a bit but what do we have well let's first of all hit the Q key and the C key okay which is the way I usually like to play so far as far as I can tell it's the best way for me to be able to uh, tell what's going on with my uh, command and my unit, uh, my force disposition. Um, so, what do we have here? Okay, we have an artillery piece, a falcon. It's got a range of nine. Um, and I guess I sh I'll show you. Uh, so the all the information for everything is in this parameter data dialog, but I have taken it onto myself, and I made this play aid. Which I find is a lot easier for me to uh, to see at a glance the information uh, on how the train, how how much movement fact, how many movement points it takes for each type of unit to move through. Uh, this is basically all the uh, information about the column, what they melee at if they're in column, which is the same for everybody. It seems it's three quarters uh, strength. And then the uh, fire, which for almost everybody is only at 25% strength. So we definitely don't want to be in column with our infantry when we're, we're firing. Uh, uh, other things, all these factors that you scroll through that data, I find I've been able to put it down to just a couple pages in this spreadsheet. Uh, so if we look at the Falcon, we see that at a range of nine, yes, it does do damage. Uh, but at uh, range of one, it does seven. Now here's, I don't actually, I understand that uh, the what it's going to do more and more damage uh, the closer you are to the enemy. But uh, is this like three quarters of its strength, double its strength, triple its strength, five times its strength, seven? Like I, I'm not quite sure. I just, I know. Hey, uh, range of three seems to be the sweet spot here for the Falcon. Uh, whereas with a cannon, the sweet spot would be at a range of eight. Just looking at quickly at the damage, damage to the danger you're putting the artillery piece in. Uh, that looks to be the sweet spot. But I don't actually know, like, this is a 7.5 and this is a 2.5. What, 2.5 times something? 7.5 times something? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. All I know is that, yes, damage does go up. And I can easily tell here. Like, look at uh, the arc bus. Uh, it's uh, you get six damage 
I go first. First is soft. Second is the second number is hard versus hard targets, which would be armored. Um, but uh, and then at a range of two, you only do one sixth of the damage. So obviously the arquebus is not really worth it to fire at a range of two, especially when they start to check to see if they're low on ammo. Um, so this is, this chart comes in handy to be able to tell what range you want to have your uh, your weapons firing. What's the best bang for the buck, so to speak? Uh, <clears throat> there's other things like fatigue that I haven't got into yet, but we'll wait until it actually becomes a factor in the game, or else I will be here all day and not move a piece. Okay, so looking at this, we have a divisional commander here. We uncheck him. We see that, okay, so this colonel, this brigade leader commands these troops here. Uh, the divisional commander, so what's this guy here? He commands those. He commands those. And they're all under this divisional commander. Um, and quality C. So these are moderately trained troops, experienced. These, this, these are awful quality E. Okay, so these we do not want to put too much pressure on them. Okay, and this is the other thing: the uh, the uh, Kingdom of Naples and the Spanish. They don't seem to have pikemen. They have uh, hal. I'm going to massacre the word halberds, halberds. Uh, which are like a pole weapon with an axe on the end, I believe. And that's what they use, which aren't, uh, aren't nearly as effective as the pikes, as we should see. So this is one of the reasons why they're behind the times. They, they don't seem to have any pikemen as of yet. And I, uh, well, I mean, the French don't have uh, arquebuses either yet. I think it's the Swiss that have them in this battle. All right, we have some cavalry here. Uh, we have, this looks like our heavy. So this armor of three, that means that I believe 30% of the damage dealt to this unit, it will uh, soak off, the armor will. Um, the melee of one. Once again, I, there's melee two, melee three. I'm not quite sure what that, does melee two mean that they double their damage output? Melee three triple? I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, all I know is that it's better, uh, which is enough for now. Uh, so, and then we have up here, what do we have here? Two, see, these are, this is what I was talking about. So with infantry, you can break them down into skirmishers, uh, your units, if, if they're not restricted, that is. If they're like a light infantry unit, you can break them down. Uh, but cavalry, they're called squadrons. And as you can see here, there's 25 uh, men on horse here and 25 here. Uh, and they are armed with javelins, which they can throw at a range of one. Uh, so these are basically very light, light uh, stradiotes, which are, I believe, from uh, oh, the Balkan area, right? Uh, they're, they're mercenaries. Uh, let's put, but, or at least they're trained... Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I thought they were from uh, Balkans area. Maybe they're just following their Italian soldier or Italian cavalry. They're following the same kind of uh, setup. Uh, okay, and see this guy, this cavalry unit here is at strength 50%. So half strength. Why is that? Because it's split out two squadrons of men. So I think it's, yeah, so they normally are 100 men, and 25 or 50 of them are down here in the squadron. So he's only 50% strength. I don't quite know why we have two squadrons, actually. Uh, I would figure it would be, it's probably because usually there would be fog of war, and uh, these two would be very, I mean, they're, they would be uh, scouts. They'd be, these are set up to go running down to try to find out where the French are. But since we're playing board game style, where there is no fog of war, I don't really see the point. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring him up here. And then, uh, <clears throat> so to uh, go to unit up here in the toolbar. So normally to make a squadron, you would hit this button right here, change skirmisher squadron. Uh, 
but that would just, if I did that right now, that would just make another 25 men group. So to bring a squadron back into its parent unit, you click on the squadron itself and then hit that same button. And now see we're up to 75%. Uh, we're gonna move in here and we're gonna do the same thing. I don't see the point in having those squadrons. Uh, we want the uh, units, because once again, the stacking level I believe is what, 800 men? Uh, we don't want to get above 600 though, because after we get above 600, uh, we'll take that penalty because there's so many units massed in uh, in a small area. Also, not only that, but cavalry also, I believe, yes. Anytime someone fires at a cavalry uh, unit, they get a 30% uh, bonus to their damage because, of course, the man on a horse is a much bigger target, easier to hit, I'm assuming. Um, all right, so back to it. We're going to, so we look here, we have an army commander. Let's get him away from everybody else. So if we look out, if I zoom out, you can see the army commander's uh, command range is huge. But as far as I can tell, and I, I'm, I am missing something, I'm sure, he's only worried, when it comes to the army commander, he's only worried about the next level down of commanders, which would be, there. I don't see any wing uh, commanders as of yet. So the divisional commanders. So he's going to give them bonuses if they are inside of his command range. Uh, he also, um, he also will uh, help, uh, if he's stacked with a unit, he will give it, and I did find that out, that is, uh, there's this, of course, there's a 25% uh, advantage to your fire damage if your quality of air higher than those E troops, which I already saw, minus 20% to our fire damage, so that's, that's great, um, but uh, I thought I had it, I thought I saw that the uh, commander will give a 20% bonus if he's stacked with, uh, with whatever units he's stacked with. So the army commander will still do that, uh, but he's quite important, only Tharant the second. So we're just going to move him down here by himself for now until I figure out exactly what I'm doing. So this divisional commander, he is in command of the cavalry, and there doesn't seem to be a brigade level commander, so that's actually quite handy. If he's the direct commander of those cavalry, that means we have a much bigger command uh, uh, radius that we can operate out of. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're gonna look at the units here. we got 400, and these are cavalry. These look like they are heavy. Yeah, they are. It says right there, heavy cavalry. So they have an armor of three, melee of two, which is better than a one, uh, not as good as a three. But I'm uh, not quite sure what that means. Like uh, when they melee attack, it's doubling the normal calculation. Is that what that means? So, but they're worth, as we can see for victory points, look how much these things are worth. Whereas the Stratiotes are worth 13 victory points. If we lost this cavalry, this heavy cavalry, we would lose 34 victory points. So we really don't want to put them in a situation where they, um, you know, are totally decimated. We want, we want to be quite careful, but these, and I'm not going to, I can just keep talking and talking and not do anything, but cavalry, a unit like this, we want to set it up to do a charge, which when the time comes, we'll go over the rules then. Uh, but so, but this unit charging into these French crossbowmen would be excellent. We'd love to do that. Now, the other unit is another special cavalry piece. It's uh, Dragoons. So these are basically mobile infantry. They're armed with crossbows. Um, but they are on horses, but to when they get into fight, fighting range, they want to they will dismount off of their horses and fight as cro normal crossbow infantry. Um, so basically, there's a crossbow infantry that can move a lot faster than uh, the same same unit on foot. Uh, and then what do we have here? We have some more uh, Stratiotes, the light, very light cavalry. They just go up and they chuck uh, javelins. Uh, trading fire with the uh, crossbowmen would be bad. What we want to do with these light little guys here is we want to get in behind and attack on the flank or from the rear. 
or uh, the other thing they can do is chase down uh, routing units. They're great for that. Uh, the other function is, of course, scouting. But once again, the way we're playing this scenario, we don't need to scout. Uh, so what do we, so we have, I want to get the dragoons out. And we have uh, 300 strategies. Okay, so I'll keep this stack together. And down we go. So we're going to make a beeline for the river. And cavalry will, and then we're facing this direction. Let's, let's change that. We want to go counterclockwise there. So now, now our zone of control is in these two hexes here. Uh, even through that cost movement. But we're, we're not going to get across the river this time anyways. All right. So that those 200 stratiotes, stratiotes are there. These guys are going to come down here. Dragoons will fall in behind. And then our, our commander with the cavalry, which I forgot. These guys are quite a bit slower. So these guys are all... Oh, no, he's a divisional level commander, which means his command radius is bigger. So we might be able to keep them. And we can. I think, oh, yeah, well, there's no issues there. So they will not become detached. Now, when they cross... Cavalry crosses this stream here... Uh, they are going to become disordered. So we want to keep them close to the commander. So we need to get them across the, screen, the stream and uh, re recover their uh, to good standing before we can actually do anything against the French. But it looks like we're going to have the time. Um, leave that army commander there. Now there's this mess here. Oh, let's see if we can get this organized. Uh, let's see. So we have guns, this colonel, okay, so this brigade commander here looks like he's in charge of, is this a gun? Yes, he's in charge of these two guns. So let's just click him and the guns. These are sackers, which are range 12. And if we look at the sacker, we see that, I guess, range 8. We'd like to be able to shoot at range 8 or closer because we only have if you look here you see this ammo 30 that's the complete ammo that's total ammo we have in this scenario for those guns remember how i was talking about the supply wagons and running low well that's only for infantry and cavalry anything that's using uh range weapons but it doesn't count the artillery the artillery actually just uses this ammo here so uh we do not want to be firing this gun at range 12, for example, we'd be, or even 9 to 11, we'd be wasting it. In fact, I'd really like to get it up to here. Or I mean, look, look at the damage output difference. And through, I don't exactly know what that means. Uh, I don't know the specifics. I do know, I can tell that 6 is a lot better than 1. Uh, so I, we want to, we, we aren't going to be firing at all at this range. We'll see about at range 8. So looking here. The other thing about artillery is, is that your units will block their line of sight. So we can set up our, our guns here, no problem, but then if we have any of our men in front of them, they won't be able to shoot at the enemy, the French. So one way around that is if they're up on a slope, then they could fire over the heads of, they could fire over the uh, our own troops. So the question is, I think I want to set those guns up on the slope. Um, so let's do that. Let's try that. Uh, so we got a 12 movement. These right now, they're limbered. So once again, you can hit the change formation button, and they'll become unlimbered, which means that they are, they're on way. Let's move them out so that you can actually see them. And let's get rid of the leader for a second. So you can see that right now that gun's being pulled by... Uh, by a wagon, and it's, which means it's limbered. Uh, so, uh, but to actually fire the gun, you have to unlimber it. So for the smaller guns, you, I, I think it's only horse artillery. In this day and age, in 1495, uh, artillery is not very uh, mobile. Uh, it's not like in Napoleonic's time uh, where you could, they could uh, move and fire. Uh, 
these guns here they have to set up. The bigger guns definitely have to set up. Uh, and I don't know how long it takes. I haven't actually had to set up a gun. Uh, but we're, we're going to find out. We're going to find out to, or in this battle. Uh, so I'm going to move towards the slope here. Getting in the way of everybody, I'm sure. Okay, so that's as far as they can go. And then we're going to get the other gun. And we'll move it. See, now the gun itself will be blocked by, uh, by the gun below it. We could put them in the same hacks. What's the stacking uh, for guns? 16 guns. And I have three here and three here. So I only have six guns from what I can tell. I don't see any other guns. No. So I only have six guns. So I could put them in the same hex and then I don't have to worry about uh, um, about them blocking each other's line of sight. Uh, so we'll go like this. And I don't know how far down we're going to go, but I think we'll go down maybe a couple back from the stream, set up here, here, here. I, let's say here. This hex looks like a good hex. Uh, so that's one, two, three from the stream. Uh, and that's when they really become deadly. Uh, so what, is, what type of guns are these? These are Falcons. Okay, so that is a Sacker. So these aren't huge guns, but this one I believe the Sacker requires a setup time. Uh, if I look here. Uh, it doesn't say it does. But I'm pretty sure... Oh, just no defensive fire. Can fire indirectly. Okay. So, yeah. That'll, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the sacker, the heavier gun, needs to have set up time. I don't know. I don't think the uh, the Falcon does. It's a smaller gun. And if we look at the Falcon, we see that not ever going to fire it at range 9. And we'd really like to get it down to, well, range 3 for it to become really effective. So we definitely want to be here. We're 1, 2, 3 away from the stream because if the French make it to the stream they'll have to stop we'll, the stream will slow them down which will allow us to really get them but we don't want to be on top of the stream with the artillery so I'm going to say there so that's that now this divisional commander he commands all of this okay okay here's here's the other brigade commander so let's look at so this brigade commander here Controls all, all the units in that stack. And this brigade commander here. Uh, okay, okay, I got you. So what do we got here? We have a halberd. So we'll keep our commanders personally with the halberd. And I know I'm saying that wrong. But the uh, <clears throat> they're basically, these are their heavy infantry, which are not as good as pikemen, as far as I can tell. Uh, so we're going to move. We're, we'll try to, or we'll have to come over here. Now, I think the Spanish... Uh, they're, the reinforcements, they're going to arrive in this area here. So the Spanish will come down. They'll be on our far left flank. So we'll come down with this group to the middle of the, uh, of the battlefield. We're not going to be able to get across the stream this time. But, all right, and then these guys here. The divisional leader, we're not going to worry about just yet. Okay, and then we'll move him down as far as he can go. And then the other brigade leader, what do we got here? He doesn't have any halberds, all crossbowmen. So we'll take the strongest unit with the commander. And uh, I guess we'll head down this way. I didn't click the right thing. Get there. Okay, let's head down don't think no so if we look at the terrain modifier a stream right here is for a column of infantry it says one but I have a feeling that's one plus one on top of the three that you would normally spend because it is we're going to a clear hex so three plus one is four and we only have three movements so we just can't quite get across the stream this time which is which, well I mean We'll have to live with it. So these guys will come down. Everybody just doesn't quite have. You got to be careful with 
putting you can't put cavalry and infantry in the same hex usually they'll disorder each other I don't know if that's all, I, th I know it's definitely if the infantry is in line formation they'll, they'll be disordered but I'm not sure about column Gosh, well, I'll have to check that up for next time uh, down they come all right so now this divisional leader he's in command of all this but really as far as I can tell I can't stress that enough we just want to make sure he's the two leaders under subordinate leaders under him the two brigade commanders they are inside of his command base. so we're just gonna move him there for now we will eventually we'll want to put him into a unit to give that bonus that leaders give to the attacks uh, but for now uh, I'm not worried about it too much and the army commander we zoom out oh yeah there's, there's not gonna be an issue we'll just put that uh, he'll he'll come here to the edge here of the slope and he'll uh, survey his realm all right now this oh god okay so we got to so he commands these two stacks this uh, brigade commander and these seem to be all generic. Look at this rating E, like D, E, D. Like, come on, these troops. We're, we're at the bottom of the barrel here. D, E, E. So, and what that means is if they ever make a morale check, most likely they're going to fail. So they're going to be, these boys will be seeing them routed in no time. Uh, so we're going to have to be really, really careful with them. Uh, what am I gonna do? Okay, so first of all, we got a halberd here, so we'll put the commander with that. Now, where is this group gonna go? Just looking at this, we have too much for this small hill to be in a line, so we could be a reserve. What about this guy here? Okay, so he commands these. Okay, so let's move him first. And we're gonna come down here. Uh, oh man. E E D E. This is this is uh, not good. Okay, we do have two halberd uh, units here, so let's uncheck them. And then the commander's going to head out with 800 of his heavy troops, and down we come. They're quite slow, I see. And this guy's already out of movement. These guys seem to be different. Like for example, this halberd. This one has armor one, but this one doesn't. I don't see a melee at all for either of them. And unlike the ranged weapons, where you can see these attack factors, I don't really see the attack factors for like halberds and pikes, unless there's like a melee, melee value there. But, but, so I think I'm missing a little bit of information. I, I didn't see it in the manual. So I might have, I, I've, obviously I've missed it, but I don't quite understand. Like, how do you tell the difference in damage that a halberd will do to those pikemen, for example? Uh, right now, if we look at the uh, French pikemen, you see, like, these guys don't even have a melee. These guys. No. Okay. So I don't really understand how much melee damage these guys do. I know it is based on the number of men, but if anybody could fill me in on that, that would be muchly appreciated. Uh, all right. So we got these guys. These are our crossbowmen. They're just going to come down here. As far as they can go and then we have a whole bunch more crossbowmen and I don't see the point in having them all stacked together we might as well go like this and like this can't quite do that like this there we go and if we look at his command radius perfect everybody's inside of it Okay, what do we have next? We have more. Okay, so two more halberds. So this is where most of our heavy infantry is. We're going to take them and head down. Uh, I guess we're going to go to the far left. Seems like this is too much for this area. So I might do something different with these guys. What's this divisional commander? Of course, he commands all of these. So we really want to, if we want the divisional commander to be max effective like supporting all his brigade commanders we to keep all of these units they're lit up together um, but 
it doesn't mean you can't break off. We can have a detached brigade leader. He'll still give the bonuses and help rally the troops under him. Um, so, uh, but we know the Spanish are going to be over here, but maybe, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to break him off. But this guy, meanwhile, these guys are going to come down here. And I think... Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go like that. So where's the brigade commander? <clears throat> okay, so he commands that one. <clears throat> What's he got? Oh, these are. Uh, this is more cavalry. Oh, nice. Oh, this cavalry's part. That sucks. So these cavalry down here is its own independent group. The cavalry stack I have here is part of this large group here of these. It's, it's stacked in the cavalry is stacked in with the uh, with the infantry. So if we wanted to keep them all under command, uh, cavalry these cavalry are going to have to stay close. Now, hmm, that is very. I suppose we're going to need. Yeah, yeah. Tough. Okay, so this is heavy cavalry. All right, so we're going to go like this. He's going to be with the heavy cavalry. The colonel. Already, as we can see, this is getting pretty busy. Pretty. All right, the whole idea of me moving these pieces around is to make things better, not worse. So, <laughs> uh, let's just, uh, what do we got here? 200 crossbow and then we got 200 javelin which I think I'll so the crossbow will come down here like this and I didn't mean to bring the divisional commander with it but that's all right and then these two are going to we'll keep them together so I'll come here like this and we're going to have to decide what we're going to do with the divisional commander we'll move him to the army commander for now so under him no, not the army commander. Under the divisional commander, we have this guy, this guy, and this guy. So we could give out. I have a feeling I should send these guys this way. I do. All right, so what do we got here? Once again, we got Orn Halberd. So we'll put with him. And we're going to move this way. We're, he's just, we're just going to have to become detached with this brigade commander. All right, and then we have 600 crossbow infantry. We'll leave them together. And then up here we have Halberd. Have him by itself. Actually, we could put him with the commander, but not to not this time. And then we have 650 crossbow infantry, which will bring here. Well, I mean, it's, it looks a little bit more organized, right? Um, and I believe, hey, look at that. I've done my, done my turn. This is a 3D view, by the way. Um, me being a uh, tabletop hex encounters war gamer, uh, it's not for me. Um, so I play with the 2D view. But using my mouse wheel, you can pull back to zoom out push in and zoom in. And the bottom two zoom levels are the 3D view. Uh, it's definitely come a long ways from what it used to look at, like the, under the GTS days. Uh, but I've, I just find this so much cleaner and easier for me to tell what's going on. And I, you know, you got to use your imagination a bit more, I suppose, but uh, I have plenty of imagination when it comes to, to war gaming. Uh, I think I'm done. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to hit the end turn button. And I'm going to go to the next turn, which is now we're back to the French. And I think that's it for the video. I think that's it. We're just going to do one turn to the side. But I've gotten a lot of the explaining of the basics that I know out of the way. So now the turn should be much more just me moving. So. Um, 
But of course, next time if the French move up, well, they have they get disordered coming across the stream. So maybe maybe I can do two turns, both of them next time, uh, without having to explain much, which which would be nice. Uh, but anyways, that will be it for today. Uh, take care, guys, and I will see you on the flip side.